Hey, what's up? Welcome to a brand new Ripe Reviews. And today we're talking about the documentary Snapper, the man-eating turtle movie that never got made. And we have a special guest with us to talk about it. Uh, John Campapiano is with us to talk uh, to talk about his new documentary. You got it, man. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm, I'm happy to be here and glad you're interested in the old turtle. Oh, man. You know, I flipped this on and I was like, oh, I, I need this movie. I mean, we're right. <laughs> this is right in the pocket with like alligator and killer crocodile and stuff. And I'm like, man. I wish this <laughs> this came out, dude. I'm right there with you. <laughs> um, yeah, so so uh, John was nice enough to let us uh, catch an advanced screening of it. Yeah, so it, I mean, it's playing it's playing the festival circuit right now, um, and it did like a it did like a two week run um, at one of our art house theaters here in New England, the Coolidge Corner Theater in Brookline, Mass. Uh, it was available to to stream and rent kind of on demand, which was really great, um, and. As of now, it's available this week, uh, the week we're recording, uh, at the Salt Lake Film Society out in Salt Lake City, Utah, um, on their website as well. So um, one of the benefits, I think, of COVID in terms of this kind of stuff is that, you know, virtual screenings, you know, you don't have to sort of tune in at a certain time in a certain place to catch something. It's uh, a lot of this stuff's available, um, you know, sort of on demand uh, at your leisure. So um but hopefully Snapper will be, you know, continue to play festivals and be available for people throughout the year to check out. So, yeah, man, it's really cool. And and, and again, we appreciate you letting us get a, a sneak peek at it and uh, yeah, and check it out because um, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Yeah. When uh, Joe told me about this, I, I was like, Snapper. OK, yeah. A killer snapping turtle. That's actually a pretty good idea. And then uh, I watched the documentary. And I was like, how the hell did this not get made? <laughs> But yeah, so I do. I just want to talk a little bit. I don't want to don't want to spoil too much for those that that are gonna see it. But um, but uh, this flick was made by the same guys who did uh, Attack of the Killer Refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, Mike that's Savino right. and Mark Vo. Yep, exactly. Yeah, those uh, Mark Mark and Mike. Um, you know, they're they're. Their film, uh, their short film, Attack of the Killer Refrigerator, is is known among sort of VHS collectors, enthusiasts, and cult movie fans and stuff like myself. And um, they've been uh, creative collaborators, um, you know, for decades at this point and have written a lot of cool stuff and have shot some stuff. Um, you know, Attack of the Killer Refrigerator is basically like a student film that they shot that um, back in, in, in that era you know, it was a little bit easier to sort of just get picked up by these like tiny indie labels and, and different like, you know, different like studios, like small time studios that just like wanted content. Um, and so they were able to like get that picked up and distributed. And amazingly, like 30 years later, you know, people are dropping hundreds of dollars for like original copies. Um, so it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's those guys that made <laughs> that made or tried to make, I should say, Snapper. Yeah. Oh, man, it's that's it's so cool. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about you first before we get deep into this. <laughs> uh, if you want to tell us, you know, tell tell us a little bit about yourself, like what you're doing and how, how did you uh, how did you start filmmaking and stuff like that? Um, yeah, well, uh, fi the filmmaking stuff was an accident. Um, I yeah, I, I, my first project was a documentary about the making of um, King's Pet Cemetery, the original film. And uh, that came out in 2017. Um via terror films and synapse on blu-ray and that was just an accident um i've always been like big into film locations and stuff growing up in new england we have a lot of them and um long story short went to maine to see some of the locations from the original pet cemetery with a friend of mine and we started documenting the experience and then like five years later it ended up being a documentary totally by accident that we uh, put out, but I never had like film aspirations as a kid really or anything like that. Um, and uh, my day job is something completely different. I'm an audio visual archivist. Uh, I work for PBS uh, in New England. And so I do something kind of a little different. It's in media, but it's a little different. And uh, on the side, I write about films and like to make documentaries and stuff like that. And um, since the Pet Cemetery doc, I've, I've done a, a short doc for PBS uh, about a, a sea serpent hoax from the 1930s here in New England, which is a fun little story. Oh, and, uh, I got to see that. Where, is yeah, that available? It's, it's free. Yeah, it's free on the PBS website, like all beautiful PBS content. <laughs> That's there. awesome. But, uh, you know, so uh, you can check that out for sure. It's called The Gifts of Tony Sarg. 
Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, so we have a, a big uh, a documentary about Stephen King's It, the original miniseries that I'm doing with uh, some friends and colleagues in the UK, Cult Screenings um, and Dead Mouse Productions. That's going to be out later this year. Yeah, cannot wait for that one. That one's going to be a doozy, man. It's been a yeah, it's been a you know long project along the works about four years we've been work, working on it um which you know the reason for that basically is just that we all have full-time jobs and families and you know responsibilities and so kind of doing this creative stuff on the side can be tough and um so but anyway that's going to be really great to have come out and um and yeah that's that's pretty much me in a nutshell man <laughs> that's awesome dude yeah so you just like the rest of us <laughs> you know, exactly trying trying to make the dream happen while 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 taking care of life at the same time man for sure yep exactly and that's uh that's that's why i thought this doc was just so great because you know you have you have uh mike and mark and and they just love movies so much man and like and it got me all hyped up too cuz you know you know i'm we're we're working on side projects outside of movie Dome and stuff trying to do like uh film work or special effects work or, or what have you and it, it it's it's always inspiring to see other people just really put their heart and soul into something i mean unfortunately you know it didn't get made but it was also at a different time too you know everything yeah. wasn't as accessible and stuff like that uh to get to get your movie in front of the people that needed to see it you know yeah Scott Andrews uh, did the special effects for this, and he wasn't like a giant like uh, effects guy like in the industry. He was just some dude uh, in Massachusetts, like in his garage. And yeah, these guys and Scott is still sculpting today. I mean, you know, these guys are deeply creative, and um, you know, Scott Scott told me interesting stories that we didn't include in Snapper. Um, uh, you know, about like being at like the conventions, like horror conventions, like in the early days, you know, like, um, like bef before, you know, chiller and, and horror hound and all the big ones, like, you know, they would go and they would just set up shop and try to sell masks and like Savini would be there. And like, he, he knew Greg Nicotero back when he was starting out. And, like these guys kind of all came from the same, you know, community. And, um, and so they're all talented and some of them decided to keep doing it. And some like Scott, just, they, you know, wasn't made for Hollywood and didn't want to kind of do that grind. And, um, but they're all super talented, you know? Um, so yeah, super cool to see guys like Jim and Scott, you know, through snapper because they were creating really cool shit, you know I mean? Um, with no money. Oh yeah, the stuff that he was doing, like just in his garage, was amazing. Like the full fabrication of the the snapper head and the and the uh, the uh, rod puppet and stuff. I mean, it, it was it's really awesome stuff. I know, I know, I agree. Yeah, I could I could not believe that he actually had the original in your uh, documentary. He he even looked a little surprised that it was still intact. <laughs> yeah, that was Mike. Mike hung on to that stuff. Um or at least that the the mold for the the smaller turtle. Um Yeah, well, you know, it's like these things like like you know, I kind of like look around even the room I'm in right now talking to you guys and it's like, you know, I've got stuff that I've hung on to and you know, I think that, that was like a, a positive memory for those guys and and there's a story attached to it and um so they kept it. And, you know, for someone like me, you know, an archivist and like a history nerd. And um, I'm always looking for like those like tangible connections to like the past in some way. So like the fact that they had that stuff, um, you know, for me is what kind of like hit the light bulb for me. That was like, oh, man, like we should tell this story because if they didn't have all that stuff, it would have just literally been that like a cool story and nothing else. But the fact that they had the photos, the 16 millimeter films like all that stuff like they they kept it so that's what inspired me to be like well let's tell this story you know yeah man it, it, it's incredible so so how did you get hooked up with them like how did this all come about like the, doing this doc i think well so i've known them for like maybe a decade or or so and i think i i met them because of attack of the killer refrigerator you know i think i remember just kind of doing research and and being like, oh my God, these guys are in, in Worcester, Massachusetts. And at the time I was in the Boston area. So they, they're neighbors really. Um, oh, that's awesome. And so, yeah. So, so I think, you know, and then I just, and then social media makes that easier and, and we've just known each other kind of on and off. And um, so at the time I was writing for Scream magazine in the UK and this was in 2019, I guess. And I, I was doing an article about Attack of the Killer Refrigerator. 
And so I met them at a local horror convention uh, in Worcester it's called Rock and Shock. And, and we met for the day and whatever, and I interviewed them. And, and then at the very end of this conversation that we were having about the refrigerator, Mark said to me, knowing that I'm a really big eco horror fan, a huge Jaws fan. That's like my favorite movie. He said, okay. oh, you know, we tried to make a movie about a killer snapping turtle. And he said it so kind of casually and like off the cuff. <laughs> And, and, but it was like, I, it was like that moment in a movie where like, you know, like the, the needle and the record comes up and oh, yeah. everybody turns and sort of, you know, and so I was like, oh, really? That sounds pretty cool. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah we tried to make it didn't happen. That's fine. So I was like, oh, okay. You know, and, and I kind of didn't really think of anything else about it. And then like three days later, uh, I start getting text messages from Mark and it's some of these photos that we put in the movie. Oh man. In the doc of the turtle that they built. And I was like, wow, this is like. They actually went for it, you know, and the fact that it was so well documented. Yeah. Um, I kind of had this like this. I don't I don't really know what it is, man. Like, I, I just felt like. Maybe we need to hear stories about like movies that like didn't get made. I don't know. It was like maybe like a, a subconscious rejection of a lot of the work I had been doing up to that point, which was about kind of cult classics, you know, like Pet Cemetery and it and like a lot of my film articles are all kind of about like cult movies that people love and and I still love that stuff but I thought maybe like maybe there's like a new story to tell that you know is maybe about movies that are either lost that were made or movies that didn't get made or you know movies that weren't finished because there's so much of that content out there um and I've I feel like I've discovered in the last like year and a half since starting snapper that there there are a lot of people doing cool work around that subject right now, you know, like there's a book coming out by a buddy of mine, Dave Alexander, um, who used to work for Rue Moore. He's, he's got a book coming out in August called untold horror. And he interviewed Romero before he died, like about all these unfinished movies. Oh yeah. Yeah. What, what is that one coming out? The carnival? I think they're, yeah, releasing? the carnival shutters coming. Yeah. It's coming out soon. Yeah. Shutter. Yeah. Pretty, pretty excited for that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And like, there's a, there's a guy I know, this author, John LeMay, who, uh, Oh, I, I love John LeMay. So John, yeah. Like his book, Jaws Unmade, like all the, all the, you know, Jaws ripoffs and yeah, yeah. sequels that didn't happen. So it's kind of like, there, I think there is a tiny movement kind of under the surface of people really interested in lost movies or, um, you know, uh, films that weren't made in the horror genre that I think is um, really worth exploring and is kind of a breath of fresh air, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we're kind of about on this show. That's why when you approach us, you know, because you had reached out because you were like, oh, hey, man, because, okay, <laughs> I guess I'll just tell the story. So John, John and I started talking because of our mutual love for the movie Step Monster. Yeah, imagine if I just denied it. Like, right now, like after all. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. No, it's true. It's true. Oh, I mean, you know, I'm on my, I'm on my own. <laughs> so, so we, so we, so we hit it off. We were talking about Step Monster, which, uh, by the way, uh, a stay tuned for sure. Uh, at some point, we got to have John back on the show to talk about Step Monster. But, um, looking forward to my first viewing. <laughs> <laughs> We talked a little bit about it with uh, Amy Dolans when we interviewed her for Ticks. But, oh, yeah. um, nice, nice. Yeah, uh, you know when when you when you told me about that, or, or I had seen you post it, I was like, "Holy shit!" I was like, "We got to have him on the show for this." I was like, "This is a, this this is like my bread and butter, dude." Is nice. is old, uh, you know, horror movies, obviously B movies and stuff like that, but like especially ones that didn't get made. Or and and again, like you were saying before, there's just so much of that content that they still. Ha that was intact that's still around of this movie that just never made it you know exactly and in some ways you know i think for snapper at least like the movie became for me like doing the, the documentary about it it, it really it, it sort of became something other than just like the the making of a failed movie or like the story of a failed movie it was really more about like the process of trying to make a movie and like these, like the passion that these friends had to try to just make it. Um, that for me was really, that's like the heart of the story for me. Like it isn't even about snapper really. It's it, for me, it's about like this like perseverance and this like just passion for just like creating shit and just being creative and just like working on ideas and like, 
You know, like th there, there have to be a million snapper stories out there. Oh, absolutely, man. I, I loved a lot of the stuff where, you know, they've been friends for a long time, Mike and Mark, and, and they, you, you know, it, it it, they go into it in the, in the doc, but um, one of the things that really stuck out to me was like, you know, they'd get together every week for like, what was it, like the, the past like 30 years and they would like write together like in a hotel lobby. I was like, dude, that sounds like, you know, I'm thinking about Sean and I, I'm like, that sounds like us, dude. Like, <laughs> we, you yeah. know, we get together and we're always writing and stuff. Yeah, it's so relatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and yeah, that passion you're talking about, man, it, it, it actually fired me up uh, after watching it for for sure to to um not only get my ass in a in in a higher gear but uh but uh appreciate uh those around me that uh that that are into this stuff and have as have as much drive as as this whole crew did because everybody was super on point and you know and i think they mentioned in the movie but like there, you know there wasn't a fortune to be made but they didn't care you know they I mean they just wanted to make a cool movie <laughs> totally man and i think like even just kind of you know making indie documentaries you know me personally like I can relate to that too, which is like, you know, sometimes, you know, you're like, Hey man, you're calling a buddy up and you're like, Hey, can you, can you give me a hand on this project? And like, you know, pizza and beer on me. And that's like, For all sure. I can offer you, you yeah. know, and, and, and it's fine, you know? And like people show up and you just like make something. Um, dude, I'd show up at your doorstep with a, with a fucking truck full of shit, dude. Maybe like, all right, <laughs> let's roll. Let's roll, brother. Exactly. And so there's like, there's like something about that. That's like kind of really cool. And I think so. So like, kind of like you had Joe, like your response to it for me too, was like, you know, I, I, I kind of get these guys. Like I understood it. Like, sitting there interviewing them. This wasn't like, I wasn't listening to like this kind of detached foreign experience that I couldn't understand. Like, I was like, Oh no, I get this, you know? Oh yeah, totally. Um, and, and in some ways, like, you know, like my, my good friend, Dave Bigelow, who, you know, cut the, the short with me and color graded it. You know, I had like a good friend, uh, Barry Clegg, who did all the motion graphics, a colleague of mine at GBH at PBS where I work, um, did the, the audio mixing. So like the making of snapper was in the spirit of like the making of this, the documentary of snapper was in the spirit of snapper, which is like, I had friends help me. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. It's poetic, man. So it was very, it's very meta in that way. You know what I mean? For sure. So who got dragged into the uh, pier with their head hitting it? Which, which, which <laughs> who got stuck with that job? God, you know, I spoke to him, but he, uh, we couldn't get him on camera just because it was beyond the scope of what we were trying to do. But, um, but I forget his name because he, he had like a few different roles. I think, I think that was Blair, a guy named Blair who, uh, he played a couple of roles in Snapper just because, you know, they didn't have a lot of people to choose from. And so like they had a wig on them. It was like that Jerry curl wig yeah. you know, from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> um, great, dude. And uh, Scott, Scott took a mold of his head and, you know, um, that, that mold that went under the dock is still, it still exists. I went to see Scott a couple of weeks ago um, to pick up some snapping turtles that he, he sculpted for me for like a fun promo thing. And Oh, uh, yeah, and, and we went digging around in his uh, his garage where he's got all these like crazy cool things, and he actually pulled out that bust that there's a picture of it in Snapper, and then that's the one they pull in the water under the dock. It, it still exists, believe it oh, or not. Man, um, that's so cool, dude. It's it's looking a little rough, but it's still <laughs> technically, physically, is a thing. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. For the movie that didn't get made, he still has all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, know? man. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, you mentioned those those promotional turtles, man. Do you, can you talk about like what you're gonna do with those, or like how that's all gonna pan out? Or yeah, well, we did we did one batch just for fun. I had I had sent Scott a message and just said, hey man, wouldn't it be cool if we like made um, promo turtles just like the ones that you guys made? Oh man, for the for the real movie, but for the doc, you know. I am such a huge fan of like promo paraphernalia. Like I got all kinds of stuff, dude. Um, Do you? Yeah, I got like the original Creep Show cups that they gave away at the theater. Oh, nice! I love theater cups. Hell yeah, man! I've got one from Jaws and Jaws Two. I love theater cups. Yeah, there you go, man. I got all kinds of weird shit. I have a I have a Terror Vision. Um, I don't even know what you call them. It's a, you know you know like those uh, those viewfinder. Um, things where the little pictures in you hold up to the light and oh, you yeah. can see through it. Yeah. yeah, it's like a TV of Terror Vision and inside you hold it up to the light and you can see the poster. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty neat, but man, I don't know how 
I can get my hands on one of those turtles, but maybe we can maybe we could figure something out. <laughs> totally, man. I mean, they're they're you know they're not original. They're like remakes. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, for the doc, is because Scott now Scott does like amazing three D printing stuff. He's got his own three D printing business, and he yeah, that's still, awesome. He still sculpts and stuff. Are you gonna like offer those to people through through some type of? Well, I mean, it, it's funny. It's like one of these things where like we just kind of made it like on like just kind of like out of fun. And I posted right. about it on Instagram and Facebook, and people were like, "Where can I?" You know, like people kind of went like a little nutty, and I was just like, "Oh my god, we only have 12. And like, <laughs> I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure that like. People that helped me make the film got one. Um, oh, for sure. But but Scott made a second batch, and it's really cool. In the bottom of the like under the belly, if you flip the turtle over, it's got the title. It says the snapper, the the man eating turtle movie that never got made, which is really rad. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, we'll have another twelve, but we'll we can talk about that. I'll I'll, I'll make sure you guys get one. Oh, that would be dude. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not holding you to it, but that, that would be, that would be amazing if that's possible. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, did you want to talk a little bit about, uh, the, the Pennywise, the story of it? Oh God, man. Oh, if you want to hear about it. I mean, Jesus. No, for sure, dude. You know, I figured this is mostly going to be about you this episode. So I wanted to talk about your projects and stuff and get, get your stuff out there. You know, we are big, uh, Pennywise fans on this show. Put it that yeah. way. <laughs> oh, are you? Okay, cool. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, we're, we're. All I can say is that at this point is that we're like working hard on finishing. We're we're sort of laying the score now. We're working with a composer um, who's doing all original music for it, which is amazing. Um, and so it's just uh, you know it's been kind of slow moving, but uh, we're we're really at the finish line at this point. And um, we every day we're watching you know different sections of the film um, with the score and kind of tweaking it and working with the composer and. Um, it's close and it, it's been a long wait, but it'll be worth it. Um, it's such a deep dive and we're really proud of, you know, what's in there. And, um, it's not just a making of the mini series, like, okay, day one, this happened day two. Like we, we get into like the history of clowns and Tim Curry talks about kind of his history, his personal history with clowns growing up in England. Oh, wow. We talk about phobias um and we we do a deep dive and it's really cool i think i'm biased so what do i know that sounds amazing dude but i think i think i think fans are gonna really dig it you know we obviously went to vancouver where they shot the miniseries so there's like a lot of cool location stuff um with where they filmed it and um i don't know i'm I'm really proud of it I, i think it's gonna be really cool so that'll be out soon we don't have a date um but Hopefully this summer we'll know for sure when and where it's going to be premiered. Uh, it'll definitely be at a festival. And so, yeah, so excited about that. Looking forward to getting that off our plate for sure. Gro- <laughs> Groovy, man. I can't, I can't wait to check it out. I- I'm giddy just hearing about it. Cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, we we have a mutual friend of the show, uh, Joe Chapman, and uh, I was yeah. talking to him the other day, and he mentioned uh, a short a short that you had worked on. I believe it's called Georgie. Yeah, is that available or or? It is. It's it's streaming on YouTube. Okay. It's uh you know not hard to find in that way. Um, it's a little you know Georgie was very cool, man. I mean, so God, the short version of Georgie. Um, <laughs> I don't want your listeners to feel like they took an Ambien and forgot about it. So, so let me, so, so Georgie, um, we tried, obviously we wanted to have Tony Dakota who played Georgie in the miniseries. We wanted him in the documentary. Sure. And he was hard to, he was hard to track down for a while, but when we tracked him down, we, we interviewed him and it was great. And in the interview, I asked him, you know, would you ever want to get back into acting? Because he hadn't acted in like 30 years. And he said, yeah, but I just don't know how to, I don't know how to do it at this point. Like, I don't know how to get into business. I don't, I don't know, you know, it's been so long. And so my, my good friend, Ryan Grulick, who's out in Seattle, um, who is a filmmaker as well. He and I kind of said offline, like, wouldn't it be cool if we made a short film for Tony to help him get back into the public eye, to kind of get back on the scene, put him on a set, give him something really positive to do. Dude, that's fantastic. So we wrote this, we had this idea of like, okay, we'll we'll call it Georgie. And I think we got a little too esoteric with it, meaning that like we really wanted it to feel like a fever. I mean, the short is like seven minutes long, but we wanted it to feel like a fever dream. Like you sort of like sat down, watched this thing, and like it was just psychedelic and bizarre and you know, just really esoteric. 
And th the idea was basically that Pennywise is haunting Sharon Denbro, who is the mother of Bill and Georgie Denbro. Um, and so we wrote this piece with two characters, Tony reprising Georgie, but he's really Pennywise and, and the mother Sharon Denbro. And, and there's basically no dialogue. It's basically sound design, visual effects, and lighting the the story is amazing and i can't wait to check it out yeah check it out i mean you know you know it's it, it played it played some festivals we had a premiere here in new england um at the boston underground film festival which is like kind of like a near and dear you know underground film fest for for us on the east coast here um but but yeah i mean it was a fun experiment i mean for me i had never done anything like in a narrative space Everything I had done at that point was like retrospective, documentary, history based. And so to sit down and work on a project where it was like, okay, well, you can just make all of this shit up. I mean, none of it is tethered to reality at all. That was like super freeing and really different for me, you know? Sure. Um, but it was very cool to do. And, and, and you know, we, we did a little crowdfunding campaign to pay for it. Um, Ryan and I didn't make any money on it, but we were committed to putting a, a couple bucks in Tony's pocket, which we were able to do, which felt good. And, um, and we made a little thing and it played and some people saw it and some people didn't like it and some people did and whatever, that's fine, you know, but, um, so Georgie, you know, check it out or, or, or don't, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely will be for I, sure. I think I'm going to be watching it as soon as this interview ends, to be honest. Okay, man. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, check it out. It's on YouTube. You'll find it. We put it out via Creepy Kingdom, which is the production company that Ryan, my friend Ryan in Seattle runs. So um, if you're looking at it on Creepy Kingdom's YouTube page, that's the that's the one that we put out. So, yeah. Cool, cool man. Where can uh, where can everybody find you and 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 all your projects and kind of keep up with you? Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. I'm I'm, I'm putting together a website with a buddy of mine who knows more about that than I do. So um, I'm hoping to sort of aggregate all of this stuff into one space um, soon in the next month or two. I'll have my own kind of like website up where you can like link out to my articles on all the various places, Fangoria and stuff, and um, or you know read about my shorts and my films and docs and stuff and um so you know i guess for anybody that's interested you know i'll promote that on facebook and instagram um when it's ready and um you know my instagram handle is my name it's nothing complicated so i'm around <laughs> yeah awesome and yeah when that website's up we'll definitely plug it too for oh, sure thanks man cool Appreciate yeah dude that. Um, yeah, and if uh, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out Unearthed and Untold, The Path to Pet Cemetery, which I believe you said is out on Synapse Blu-ray right now? Yep. Yeah, they put it out back in 2019, I think it was, um, on Blu-ray, which is like a nice, a nice full version with some special features. And um, yeah, it's a fun a fun doc that we made for like 6,000 bucks out of our own pocket that somehow still has a life that people are watching, which is just tremendous, you know? So that's very cool. Yeah, man. Uh, listeners definitely check that out and, um, definitely see snapper when, it, when, it, when, uh, when you can, when, after it hits the festivals and you know, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. If it's coming to home video or what have you. Yeah, that's the plan. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get it out on home video at some point. I mean, shorts are kind of tough for that. Um, you know, kind of finding a, a permanent place for them to live. But um, yeah, I think this year, hopefully it'll just continue to play at little festivals or big festivals, hopefully. And um, and then we'll find a place to park it, you know, um, and who knows, maybe Mark and Mike will, uh, maybe the right person will see it and they'll want to throw some money at Mark and Mike to finally make Snapper. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be like the, that's the dream, really. Wouldn't that be so fantastic? It oh my goodness. Be. I would love to like, I would love to go back into Snapper and recut it such, such that like we have like the end credit come up, but then you have like the dot, 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 you know, oh, yeah. 20, 2021. <laughs> and then, For and sure. then we just like, we cut to one scene, which is like the first day of principal photography on Snapper. And then that's it. I mean, that would be amazing. That, oh my God. That would be could, awesome. They could make it. Yeah. I will lend all of the hands that I have if, if need, if you need it. So, <laughs> well, and I will say guys really quickly that like, I feel like you should try to have Mark and Mike on the show because I know that they're working actively on, um, attack of the killer refrigerator two 
And I've seen and, I, and I've seen storyboards for it. Oh man, hell yeah, we'd love to have them on. Yeah, if you want to, it's cool. You know, I know that they'd love to talk about it, and they could probably give you like you know firsthand accounts of Snapper and all the other cool stuff, the hook of Woodland Heights, and all the other stuff that they've they've worked on over the years. So anyway, food for that th- would be amazing. We we always love talking to people, so that is a uh, good idea. Thank you. Right on. Yeah, cool. So that's it. Uh, uh, Snapper, the man eating turtle movie that never got made, it was amazing, and uh, definitely keep an eye out because you do not want to miss Snapper. I mean, this documentary is fantastic. Uh, as soon as it hits uh, where it's going to hit. I'm not sure what John's plans are for when he's releasing, but it is on the circuit now. And I just want to thank you again for letting us check out an advanced copy of it. Uh, thanks for watching it. <laughs> I can't wait for all you guys to see it, as I'm sure uh, John can't wait for you to see it either. And uh, we will catch you on the next Ripe Reviews.